In this video, we'll be looking at another past paper exam question for acids and bases. This comes from a grade 11 paper, but grade 12s, if you're watching this, this is good revision for you as well. My first question wants me to give the definition of a Lowry Bronsted or Bronsted Lowry base. Now remember, there's the Lowry Bronsted definition and the Arrhenius definition. They ask the Lowry Bronsted definition a lot more often, but please don't get caught out and not study the Arrhenius definition. It does come up as well. The Lowry Bronsted definition is way easier though, and Lowry Bronsted defines a base as a proton acceptor. And some definitions carry on and say in the presence of an acid, it's not necessary. Proton acceptor is what we are looking for. And remember, that makes an acid a proton donor. My next question wants me to identify and label the conjugate acid-base pairs in this reaction over here. They tell me to label it as well as the pairs. So in order to do that, how I do it is you look at the equation and you pair up the different pieces. So this is sulfuric acid and they tell you that it's ionizing in water. They also tell you that this is the first step in the ionization of sulfuric acid. In order to completely ionize, sulfuric acid goes through two steps of ionization. This is the first step. So H2SO4, what does that become after it reacts with water? We can clearly see that it becomes HSO4 minus. And we're going to have to consider how that happened in a second. And then H2O becomes H3O plus. How do I know that those must pair up? Well, I mean, this one and this one, they differ by an H plus. So what happened? How did this one, H2SO4, become HSO4 minus? Basically, what happened is it lost an H plus. So it donated an H plus, making this the acid. And after it donated, after it lost the H+, it becomes this. This is therefore known as the conjugate base. And that is basically my first acid-base pair. So I'll write it down here. So I'm saying what is in the pair. So this is one pair. These two are together in a pair. And this is the acid. This is the conjugate base. And that leaves me with the yellow one over here. That makes H2O the base. And how do I know that it's a base anyway? Because it became H3O+, which means it accepted an H+. Remember, bases are proton acceptors. And that makes the hydronium ion H3O+, the conjugate acid. And then I've written out the second pair over here. 5.1.3 says write out a balanced equation to show the second step in the ionization of sulfuric acid in water. So this is the first step. Sulfuric acid reacts with water. It forms a hydronium ion, an HSO4 minus. As you can see, the sulfuric acid at this stage only lost one proton to form HSO4 minus. It hasn't lost both of its protons, but in order for complete ionization to take place, the second hydrogen, this one over here, also needs to be lost. So what happens in the second step of ionization is this ion over here, HSO4 minus, it still has a little H attached over here. That has to react with a second molecule of water. And then what happens is as follows. This hydrogen is going to be donated again to the water. So this H will then be lost. When this iron, HSO4 minus, when it loses that second H, it's going to become SO4 2 minus. Why 2 minus? Well, because it was 1 minus. It already had a charge of negative 1. Then it lost another H plus. It's losing another positive. So it's going to have a charge of 2 minus. And then H2O is going to gain or accept that H+, plus, so it'll become H3O+. Plus. That is my balanced second step in the ionization of sulfuric acid in water. The next few questions involve some stoichiometry. 5.2 say, says that learners use the reaction of a 0.15 moles per cubic decimeter. You need to recognize that this unit is for concentration. So they give me the concentration of the acid. And they're reacting it with sodium hydroxide, which is a base. So here's my base. They're reacting the acid and they give me the balanced chemical equation. First question, three marks, calculate the mass of sulfuric acid required to make a solution of 1000 cubic centimeters. Again, this you have to recognize as volume, cubic centimeters, volume, 1000. And you should also know that in most cases, and definitely in this case, we need to convert this to cubic decimeters. I'll show you why in a second. So how do you go from cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters? You divide by a thousand. 
so we got one cubic decimeter. The reason we have to convert volume to cubic decimeters is because look at my unit for concentration. It's moles per cubic decimeter. So my volume has to be in cubic decimeters. And they want the mass of sulfuric acid. So look at what they what, look at what I have and look at what I need. The formula that makes the most sense to use is the following. So remember, we have concentration, we have volume, we're dealing with solutions, so it does not make sense to use this formula. This one's for gases. We want mass. Now, mass, baby M, appears in this formula and it appears in this formula. You may use this formula to work out number of moles, followed by this formula to work out mass, so a combination of these two, or you can just go ahead and use this formula, which I'll be doing. It's quicker. One formula. A lot of my students get confused or they forget in this formula, the top is mass, baby M. The bottom, this, is molar mass that you get from the periodic table multiplied by volume. MV isn't a variable. It's mass, molar mass, multiplied by volume. So the concentration is 0, 0,15. Mass is what I'm looking for. Now, big M, as I mentioned, comes from the periodic table. It's the molar mass of H2SO4. Now, the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, but I have two of them. The atomic mass of sulfur is 32, and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16, but I have four of them. When I say atomic mass, it's the big number associated with the element on the periodic table. And 98 grams per mole is the big M for sulfuric acid. So at the bottom here, I've got 98. And remember, my volume is the cubic decimeter version. It's 1. And my mass, when I calculated, it's this multiplied by this. So mass is 14,70 grams. And my calculator said 14,7, but remember, in science, you have to round off to at least two decimal places, so put the zero there, and remember your unit, or you don't get your final answer mark. My next question is actually a titration question, even though they don't mention the word titration. Oh, no, they do, actually. There's titration. It's a titration question, which is when I take a solution or a substance of known concentration and known volume, and I use that substance, so in this case, it's the acid. So I know the concentration of the acid, it was given over here. I know the volume of the acid, it's given over here. And I use that, I titrate it against NaOH. I know the volume of NaOH, they tell me that it's neutralizing, that word is very important, neutralizing 26 cubic centimeters of the NaOH, but I don't know the concentration, and that is what the question wants. So I know these two, I don't know this concentration. We're ba basically going to do stoichiometry. There is a formula that you may use that I know that a lot of teachers teach in grade 11, and I'll show it to you. But this formula can only be used if you see the word neutralize or completely reacts. I'll show you this formula first, but again, you can only use it if the question says neutralize or completely reacts. If there's anything left over, anything in excess, which a lot of questions do to make it more difficult, then you can't use the formula I'm about to show you. Here is the formula, and basically the formula says the moles of the acid, and that comes from the balance chemical equation. It's this number over here. So that would be 1, and then the moles of the base, that over there, so that would be 2, so you would sub in those numbers. Then concentration of the acid, which we found was 0, 0,15. Volume of the acid, now in this case, it doesn't actually matter if it's in cubic centimeters or cubic decimeters. And then concentration of the base is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the concentration of NaOH, and the volume of the base is 26. So either you're going to sub in cubic centimeters at the top and, and at the bottom, or you can convert them to cubic decimeters, but you must do it for the top and the bottom. You plug it into this formula, and it gets you your answer. But again, please only use this formula when you see neutralize. I personally just prefer to do normal stoichiometry, which I'll do with you now. Now, just remember, actually, we're calculating concentration of the base. And concentration, we want it measured in moles per cubic decimeter. So it is actually better maybe just to convert these units. But anyway, so you do that, you plug it in, you get your answer. But watch me do normal stoichiometry, which is preferred. And grade 11s and grade 12s, the reason why I prefer to do normal stoichiometry like I'm going to show you is because if there's any excess, if there's any leftovers, which they do in a lot of questions, especially in grade 12, then this formula won't work and you need to work with normal stoichiometry. So I've kept my variables written out over here. And now how I'm going to do it is as follows. I want to work out the concentration of NaOH 
In order to work out concentration, I need moles of NaOH. In order to get moles of NaOH, I first need to get moles of sulfuric acid, and then I'll use a mole ratio. So normal stoichiometry. So how am I first going to get moles of sulfuric acid? Well, I have the concentration, I have the volume. So first working with H2SO4, I'm going to use the following formula to get moles. You must convert to cubic decimeters over here for the volume. So 24 cubic centimeters, you divide by 1,000, so it's 0, 0,024 cubic decimeters. To get moles, you take these two and multiply them together. My calculator gives it to me in scientific notation, but it's basically this number over here. And then I need to get from moles of sulfuric acid to moles of sodium hydroxide by using a mole ratio. So very basic, you just write out the two um, substances that you're going to be putting in the mole ratio, your mole ratio is 1 to 2. And again, where do those numbers come from? It's the same as that other formula I just showed you. It's the big numbers when you balance the equation. So what this means is I have 0, 0,0036 moles of H2SO4 that will react. So how many moles of NaOH will be produced? Well, how do you get from 1 to 2? You multiply by 2. So you need to multiply this number by 2. So you get 0, 0,0072 moles of sodium hydroxide that reacts, okay, completely neutralized, and then you need to convert that back into concentration. So here's my information about sodium hydroxide, same formula, but now in this case I know what N is, 0, 0,0072. My volume, remember, must be in cubic decimeters, so 0, 0,026. I divide that by that and I get concentration, 0,28, if you round it off, moles per cubic decimeter. There we go. Now, I know, again, that the other formula might seem quicker and easier, and in this case, because we are completely neutralizing, it is, but remember, you need to practice this method that I just showed you using proper stoichiometry for the more complicated ones. Check out the playlist link below for more difficult ones. My next question says that water can act as an acid or a base. Now, the, the term for this, water can act as an acid or base, is an ampholite. Water is amphalytic, water is an ampholite. So depending on what it reacts with, it can be an, an acid or a base. And they want me to write out two separate reactions, clearly showing water acting as an acid and as a base. So let's do water as a base first. So in order for water to act as a base, it needs to react with something that is a clear acid. So let's say HCl. Remember, bases are proton acceptors. So we want to make the H2O accept a proton, which means that this is going to be the acid. It's going to donate the proton. It's going to donate an H+, making this become H3O+. And what's left over from the acid when it donates the proton? In this case, Cl-. This is essentially the ionization of an acid in water. Water is basically acting like the base. Let's draw out or write out an equation of water acting as an acid. I'm going to react water as an acid with a weak base, ammonia, over here. So remember, acids are proton donors. It's going to donate an H plus to my base, which is ammonia. When H2O loses an H+, plus, it becomes OH-. minus. I know it's weird, we arrange, the, we put the O first and the H, it's called the hydroxide ion. It was H2, now it's just 1H. It was a neutral, now it's got a negative charge because it lost a positive. And the base, NH3, becomes NH4, but because it gained a proton, it needs a positive charge. My last question says NH4Cl. This is ammonium chloride. It's actually a salt. Is dissolved in water. In matric in grade 12, you learn about this process and it is called hydrolysis. The reaction of a salt, where the salt is the product of an acid and a base, is dissolved in water. It's called hydrolysis. In grade 11, you don't need to worry about that word, but just so you know, they want to know will the pH of the solution be greater than 7, less than 7, or equal to 7, and they want me to explain the answer. Now, in grade 11, we keep it simple, and what we do is the following. We also start off like this in grade 12, but you look at the salt and you consider which acid and which base made up the salt. So this part of the salt, Cl, think about it, it comes from HCl, which is a strong acid. And how do I know it's a strong acid? 
go to my video on strong acids and bases and learn the list of strong acids. And this one over here, NH4, this is the ammonium iron. It comes from ammonia, which we just spoke about. And ammonia is a weak base. So we've got a strong acid and a weak base. If you have someone that is very strong fighting with someone that is very weak, they're going to battle it out. Who's going to win? The strong person will win. Okay, let's just pretend the strong person is going to win. The strong person is an acid, which means the pH of the solution will be like that of an acidic solution, which will be less than 7. So your pH will be less than 7. And in grade 11, all that you need to say, you don't need to support your answer with an equation like you do in grade 12, but you have to say that it is a strong acid reacting with a weak base that produced this salt. There we go. And that is the entire question in this grade 11 paper. Let me know how you did in the comments below. And remember to check out the other videos in this playlist for more difficult questions as well. Bye, everyone.